Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Hey all, welcome to another episode of the Higher Line Podcast. I was uh, sent a video a week or two back by a gentleman who I've got with you today. His name's Pat. He was doing some woodworking and I, I saw it. I thought, oh cool, the guy's making some some nice cutting boards. I'm like, what's the big deal? I can do that. And then I noticed he's in a wheelchair and has no use really of his hands. You, your, your hands are kind of like in a permanent boxing pose. You were involved in an accident 22, 23 years ago that, that left you with some paralysis and you've had some crazy ups and downs in life and are now running a business selling some cool handmade products. And I thought your story was pretty awesome and wanted you to share it. So welcome, Pat Russo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Who, who are you? Why are we talking? Uh, well, um, I, I got paralyzed when I was 16 years old. I'm uh, paralyzed from about the chest down, uh, diagnosed quadriplegic. My hands are like this, but as I was explaining to you before, we were talking, I have 10 of these as grass. So I have to stretch my fingers out a little bit, but I could open them with my wrist down. You pull the wrist back and they automatically close. Mm. This one's a little bit more uh, atrophy than the other one. So it's, it's kind of weird. So like my left hand could do certain things. My right hand could do other things. Um, they both can't do the same thing, but with, with the way they both are, I'm able to maneuver around and uh, run my own wood shop. So below many your chest, things. nothing. You've got no feeling all the way down from mid chest. So I do have feeling. I have a, I have a um, incomplete spinal cord injury. So yeah. it's not all the way completely severed. Part of it's still together. It was so when I broke my neck, the bone broke like that, and the spinal cord was in the middle, and it kinked it and partially severed it. So I have a numbness throughout my body. Um, the best way I could explain it is um, when your foot falls asleep and it's starting to come back and you get that tingly sensation. So I could feel where you're touching me at. I can't tell you the difference if you're poking me with a needle or rubbing me, but mm -hmm. I could tell you where it's at. Um, I, see. I can't really feel if I'm getting burned or not, but I could tell the difference between hot or cold. Wow. Wow. That's into your hands too? So yeah, my, my hands, uh, thumb and finger, I feel completely normal. Then it starts getting number as you get to the pinky. And so then like super, super careful around the wood shop. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like what you could see on my arm right now, I could feel normal. What you can't see is paralyzed. Interesting. So let's hear, let's hear your, your kid. You're out driving. Let's start. Let's go back there. You're from, so, you're in um, Vegas. Is that, is yeah. that where you grew up? Yeah, I grew born and raised out here in Las Vegas. Um, the way that my accident happened, I, I was with a friend. I was riding a passenger in a vehicle. We uh, just left school. Um, I was 16 years old. Um, we were on our way to an auto parts store, drove by a high school to go check out some uh, girls on the way. And before we got there, I was going through a red light. Another guy ran a red light, uh, hit my door. They said he was doing estimated speeds of at least 65 miles an hour when he hit me and my head kind of went out the uh out the window and hit the top of the door and that's how i broke my neck and uh, got paralyzed right there wow wow were you a pretty active kid like what was, what was uh, yeah. like for you up until then yeah i was very active um ever since i got out of diapers my dad was taking me to work with them so i was working construction with them doing room additions uh bathroom remodels kitchen remodels uh things of that nature working um i was uh, did a little taekwondo bmx racing i was pretty pretty active in my younger days so what did it look like after the accident of course life massively changed rapidly talk about that a little bit you were, and, did, did did you remember the accident yeah i was i was awake immediately right after i don't remember the going i guess the car was spinning i don't remember that part but i remember waking up as my friend was getting out of the car seeing him 
I was kind of leaned over and stuck, immediately paralyzed. Um, it was weird. Uh, I never really used the word paralyzed, but but I knew immediately, like I was asking everybody, am I paralyzed? So it was like something that I just automatically knew at the, in the moment, like that that sticks out from because so many you, years ago. You could, you're sitting there, people all over trying to help and you can't feel your legs and arms and stuff. Yeah, and I was I had no arms in the accident, no no movement. And I was just hunched over, had somebody sit me up, and then I just kind of fell back down to where I was at. So um yeah, I was immediately paralyzed. Then, you know, going to the hospital and the doctors telling me that I broke my neck and I was gonna be paralyzed and the chances of getting stuff back were very slim with uh with the partial severance of my spinal cord. So it's in the moment, it kind of felt like my, my life was over. Didn't have, wasn't going to be doing nothing. You automatically start thinking about all the things you can't do, all the stuff you wanted to do and not going to be able to do. That had to be horrific. Yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Do you remember like when you were alone for the first time after you found that out when you were like bedtime in the hospital. Cause I'm sure you spent some time in the hospital, like the, how that felt. Um, yeah. So in, in the first couple of days I was by myself and then they, they talked to the head people, the, the, of the hospital and they had, so I could have family in there 24 seven to help because there was moments and it was weird. They gave me this little ball that I'm supposed to hit to call a nurse, but I couldn't even move my arms. And then because I'm paralyzed from my chest, my diaphragm was really weak. So I couldn't even really yell out, help, you know, really silent and everything. So I remember in those, that moment was kind of, wow. Yeah. Helpless feeling. That's brutal. Yeah. How, so when did you start getting back to life? You got out of the hospital, your body started healing some. So, yeah, I did. Um, I, I was in the ICU for about five days and um, I went up to a room in the hospital till April 10th and the accident happened March 21st. And then from April 10th, I went to uh, Craig Hospital Spinal Cord Injury in Colorado. It's a hospital and reha rehabilitation center. And in that program, they start getting you back out. They want you to kind of experience life before they just send you out. And um, so I was doing a little bit here and there but yeah I, for for the first year my arm my arm i had no triceps so i picked up my arm and it would just fall down for like the first year so i'd say like the first two years was mostly just therapy and um uh, yeah trying to exercise and get my arms strong i didn't really okay. do much did you finish high school i did not she just said screw it yeah, I was going They at first they wanted in the yeah. So in the beginning, um, I, I have um, I have to do like a bowel program every morning to to empty out. So I'm not, you know, going to the bathroom by myself or nothing. Still, so, still, you're saying. Yeah. And at that time, they, they call it a program because they want you to do it at the same time every single day. And over time, your body gets to a program to when that's just where you empty out, you know, you're ready to go and you don't uh, have accidents. And in the very beginning, my body wasn't on the program. So I was having accidents a lot. So I just wasn't ready to go to school. And that makes sense. That yeah. would be, that'd be pretty hard to be 17 years old in that situation. Yeah. So you got yourself into some, some shit on the streets too. You told me. Yeah. Talk yes. about that. So um, I, I, my grandma uh, started taking care of me. This is yeah, in around two, 2001, 2002. And my accident was in 2000. Um, I was just kind of in the, um, her, her neighborhood was uh, just, uh, yeah, just, I guess the, the lower, lower class of a neighborhood at the time. And um, I had I had a couple guys living across the street and and they were selling stuff and I noticed every couple of weeks that they would be out. So I went and got got myself uh, 
a little marijuana at the time and I started selling it on the days that they were out to keep the business going over there. And then it just started taking off from there. And then um, I got a driver's license. And uh, once I got my driver's license, I was just out every day doing my thing. Uh, mostly, mostly selling marijuana, um, little cocaine and pills here and there and stuff like that. But that's so you got yourself doing. outfitted with a car with hand controls. Yeah. And actually, so yeah, my first car had hand controls. And then um, later on, because hand, hand controls, the ones that are fitted in the car are like around $900 for them to fit in your car. Before I found the set that I have now, which they're about 150 and I can switch them out between any car. But the yeah. other ones they put permanently in that vehicle and they're around 900 bucks. So like, I want to say the first two years of me driving i got uh you know those pull sticks that unscrew in the middle mm -hmm. and, and i duct tape one to the brake pedal duct tape the other one to the gas pedal and that's how i was getting around for the first so you just had the years. poles coming up between your legs and you just push gas and brake yeah i it's the way my hand is set up i keep my hand on the brake the gas pedal would run right right around there so i could just kind of hit the gas and then hit the brake if i needed to that's funny we're pretty yeah. adaptable creatures yeah so you're just out running around selling dope did you get caught did you get in any trouble did anything bad happen um i've gotten pulled over with some stuff nothing like too crazy but yeah i never got busted with like a big like a trunk full or nothing like that um <laughs> excuse me no, no, nothing big to go to jail or nothing uh anything i got caught with was just a little ticket why'd you stop uh for one i started slowing down when i had my daughter uh uh in 2011 she was born and things started slowing down a lot but i still had a you know diapers roof over the head all that still had to do some things and um i was having her um I, I would have like I, I never really did anything out of my house i was always in the car traveling around uh selling everything but like if it was like a friend or one of my cousins that wanted a little bag of weed i didn't mind them coming in the house because they're hanging out anyways and one time i was um i i was selling something to to a close friend and she was maybe two years old and handed out held her hand out and said give me the money and that just kind of that was like a yeah little wake up call little wake up call yeah definitely so you decide i'm gonna quit selling drugs got a little kid yeah and then what so for when all that happened i would say there was a good two years of just i went all the way down i was um living off the welfare the food stamps I, and i've never did any of that up until this point um and i was just yeah just humbled down humbled up a lot um so you had been making money selling drugs and now you, oh, yeah. you stopped doing it and now you've got no income right and so a big part of a big part of the the income part is is uh, I'm dependent on a caregiver in the morning for about four hours. So I have a caregiver that helps me with my bowel program. And then also I do about two hours of stretching on my legs to loosen them up. And then um, they do the rest of the range of motion that I can't do. So I'm I'm dependent on, on that part. And that, like the stretching, everything's very important. I go to sleep, my legs end up at my chest almost balled up overnight because I'm not stretching out like a normal person would when they're sleeping. So I have a lot of stretching to do, and that helps with my muscle spasms and keeping me in my wheelchair and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, where was I going with this question? Sorry. We're just, we're just talking about, about the next phases of life after you stop dealing. Oh, okay. So, um, so I, like I said, I, I, hum, I humbled up a lot and I had to, um, start, uh, I, I will. Oh, that's where I was getting at. I'm sorry. Um, with the caregiver being dependent on the caregiver, I could only make up to a certain amount of money, which is like, I want to say $2,100. And I get, uh, if I make over that, I'll get cut off of having a caregiver. 
So I'm kind of like in a stuck area. And that I think that was a lot of the reason why I went to drug dealing because, you know, it was all under the table. And um, so, so a bit, that's like one of my big um, issues right now is trying to figure out ways to get past that and be able to pay for my own caregiver so I could, you know, grow and expand my business. So there was a couple year period in there where I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I ultimately was just bored. I mean, like really, really bored. Nothing I could, I couldn't really figure nothing out that I was enjoyed or could get into. And uh, my next door neighbor threw out some old chairs from the 1940s, the, like the Renaissance chairs. And um, I was like, man, I, I want to restore these. So I brought them to my house and I started sanding them down. And um, I was enjoying myself. Like it, it just felt good to be doing something. And then I started posting videos of it. Uh, you know, the, when I got the chairs, when it was sanded down hmm. um, and I started getting feedback. Uh, from everybody and it, everybody wanted to see the finished product. And so I, with the Google ads and everything, when I was looking up different things for, you know, refurbishing the end grain cutting boards popped up. So I started like going on my YouTube thing, just looking through on how to make them. And I was like, man, I could do this. And then um, just slowly started getting tools. And from there I got where I'm at now with the, the woodworking stuff so you produce these sell them on a website or sell them sell them online somehow yes yeah do sell do, them online do, do you make other things or just the cutting boards uh i made a couple tables i've done uh some urns um i started with the urns because my my daughter's mother passed away so we built her her um her urn for her and then and then from that one i've People have seen it and bought a, you know, they've ordered urns for me to build for them. Um, I've done a couple boat uh, boat tables, like the little tables that go on boats. Hmm. And then uh, right now I got a, I haven't started them yet, but I just got some uh, live edge uh, walnut to do like some coffee tables and stuff. Very cool. Very cool. So do you i mean as, as a carpenter for years myself i can't imagine trying to do the stuff you're doing without the use of my legs and fingers is it like how do you pull a tape measure how do you mark man uh, with a pencil uh pencil I, I got pretty actually got some right here so um it's weird how my fingers work because i'm like a pencil, I could still jam it in here somehow and I could get a good enough of a little mark with it, you know? And then um, tape measure, I'm like putting it in my mouth, pulling it out, hitting the lock on it and then stretching it out with the lock on it to where I needed to go. That's crazy. Yeah, there's, so, a, there's a lot of stuff using my mouth right now. Like yesterday we were, um, the drum sander puts these deep marks in the end grain boards. So I have to use a big, uh, a big direct drive sander and it's it's real powerful the first time i used it got caught up in my shirt and was all up over here had me all tied oh, up man. so uh now i have this foot pedal it looks weird because i have to like wrap it around my neck to get it like right here on my chin and you use your chin to activate the foot pedal yeah use my chin to activate the foot pedal and then just start sanding and knock it back down to shut it off that's crazy. But mo most of everything, I uh, besides that and like one other thing, everything, nothing's really adapted. I adapted to everything I use. You just figured out how to work around it. Yeah. You got a different wheelchair for the garage. So you're not coming in the house and your chair covered in sawdust. And man, the, yeah, no. <laughs> so I got, I got a shop back and got it back in the house a lot. <laughs> you need to get you a shop chair, build you build you a shop chair. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> Have you ever d talked about your life like this openly, like in a Actually, public forum? I've done it one time, uh, uh, November 20th, I think. I actually got invited on another podcast about November 20th. Okay. This is my second time. So like, you know, it's kind of a, a meandering story with, uh, from the injury to doing some some drug dealing, having a kid. Unfortunately, your 
child's mother passes away and and then you start a business doing something that normally people would think you wouldn't be able to do like what are some lessons that you've learned in all of this that are valuable for people or that you think would be valuable to people uh one of the lessons that i and i try to i push it out on my social media is uh dwelling on one thing you can't do will blind you from a hundred things you can do oh did you come up with that yourself i did dwelling on one thing you can't do will blind you from a hundred things that you can yeah what, what what brought you to that i i mean just how you're saying you don't see how i would be woodworking and stuff i didn't see that it's not also. that i can't it's not like i don't believe you can i just know no. the time people would just say like oh that's you know but that that's also my same thought the whole entire time until i did it how would I even be able to do that? Even when I was starting up and I'm, you know, using a table saw with kickback, how am I going to do this? And I just slowly just started, you know, making it happen. So when I was focusing on all the things that I can do, uh, a lot more things ha started happening around me. And the things that like in the beginning, I, I couldn't use a, a table saw. I'd have to have my brother come over and cut a few things for me up and then I'd do the rest. And then I got tired for waiting for him to come over and then just started figuring it out. So I think slowly just focusing on the things that I can do slowly just started bringing everything around for me because mm -hmm. in, in that situation, I mean, the doctors, they all say, yeah, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be doing that. So you all, you constantly hear all the things you can't do. We believe and, and then you just start believing it, wrapping it up, adding more things to that list and limit yourself. And, um, and once I stopped limiting myself and just started focusing on the things I can do and what I can't do is I, I can't do it. I just accept it and move on to the next thing that I can do. Yeah, it seems like even people that are trying to look out for you because they don't want you to get let down or hurt physically or emotionally, they tell you though, the people that care about you tell you all the things you can't do too. Right. Yeah, did you get a lot of that as a kid? um as a kid i wouldn't i wouldn't say as a kid definitely after i got paralyzed that's what you, i meant like when you were still a teenager oh yeah yeah i definitely got that and it was just um yeah there, there was a lot of stuff a lot of stuff i had to prove to them along the way even like when i first started the woodwork and my grandpa was 100 percent against you can't do the, you're gonna cut your hand off in front of your daughter and then what and blah 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 and, but now now he sees what I'm doing over there. It's a little bit different. So I had to prove a lot along the way because there was a lot of doubt um, among my peers on, on me. Is grandpa a tradesman too? Uh yeah. So he, yeah, he's, he taught he taught your dad? Yeah. He taught my dad. They did uh, construction and he kind of he was doing this um, stuff with foam for a while. They do storefronts and do carvings, and then they put like a concrete hardener on it and paint it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is, are they still doing that kind of work now? Uh, my grandpa isn't. He's uh, retired. He's, I want to say, 84 years old now. Okay. My my dad is. He's a lead engineer at one of the casinos out here, and uh, he owns his own business, uh, Construction Connection, out here. You ever think about getting out on the job site? and? Being the song mm. guy, nah, <laughs> no. Well, I like sticking to my own stuff. <laughs> I, I I dig it. I dig it. Do you ever uh, plan to add like uh, other products to the line of stuff that you're selling? Oh yeah, yeah. I I kind of I kind of looked at now that I look the way I look at it now. Cutting boards kind of opened the door for me to get the practice I needed to move on to bigger things. And I, I definitely want to get into like some bigger table furniture making and um, I, I'm always open to everything right I just did a huge uh, butcher block for the Las Vegas Raiders head chef and uh, I, they had me put their logo in it and all kinds of stuff with epoxy so I, I just That's been cool. kind of been uh, brushing up on my skills and see where it goes. How do people find you? Uh, TikTok, YouTube instagram and i got in the clap uh, clapper account too and what what do they look up uh keep it pushing woodwork keep it pushing woodwork yeah you got a website 
Yeah, it's uh, www.keepitpushingwoodwork.store. Dot store. All right. Keep it pushing. Is it uh, pushing, like pushing, pushing on, pushing through the table saw? What's that mean? Yeah, to me, it was, uh, well, I'm always pushing my wheelchair. Um, I've, I've been pushing through my boundaries. So it's just kind of all all in a mix up. My, my logo, I didn't wear one of my shirts today, but my logo is a little wheelchair guy with a saw blade for the wheel. Okay. And uh, so that's just been my... I, I just been keeping pushing through through this whole uh, experience of being paralyzed. I never, even though I was doing, you know, the drug dealing and everything, I never felt like I I let the wheelchair hold me down. I I'm put myself in that position. Just thinking about it, I put myself in that position mentally as we're talking here, and it's. I had an uncle that was paralyzed. I told you over the phone. So I, I got firsthand experience of a loved one uh, that's been in that, that condition and position. But uh, I hope I would have the fortitude to carry on. I mean, it's easy to say, but till you get there. I I've, I was very active before and I just couldn't see myself just sitting around. Like it just mm-hmm. wasn't just wasn't for me. I like that yeah what's the uh what's the future hold for you think what do you what do you want to get out of this life um right now i'm enjoying what i do i i've been inspiring people all over social media and i feel throughout all that and the feedback i'm getting my my uh purpose here is to inspire so I definitely want to get into doing some more speaking, uh, maybe some uh, inspiration speaking, motivation speaking, and uh, I, I want to I want to definitely go towards that. The woodworking, I, I love doing it. That's a passion of mine that I just enjoy. Like it's my therapeutic way of. I I, I just love doing it. Uh, very, very present in the moment. I, I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to be growing my business and start pushing it out there to um, let people see that, you know, we all have some problems and we could, we could get through them. I dig it, man. I appreciate you spending some time with me this morning. You, uh, one more time, throw your uh, your website out there. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Store. Yeah. And keep, keep it pushing. It pushing. It's and the pu- the push in don't have a G on it. It's just push in with the P- push in. Yeah, <laughs> like push push in the bush. You said push push in the bush. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to go on the website and check out these cutting boards and uh, order one up for a Christmas gift or something. Okay. You uh, you got an inventory, or do you make uh, them to order? Right, I make them to order, but I'm. I'm in there busting them out. As soon as I get done with this, I'm right back in the shop. Got it. Making, making sawdust. I appreciate you. You guys that have tuned in, I hope that you got some uh, words of encouragement, some, uh, maybe some, some life lessons in there. Like, cause sometimes I think we like, you know, we talk about like, uh, you know, "Eh, I got it so bad. Not that like, there's always somebody that's got it worse. And I don't mean it that way, but like we complain and we make uh, up excuses not to do shit. You're a good reason not to uh, give in to weak ass excuses. Yeah. And, and a lot of it too, is I, it's to me, this, this whole situation has been a blessing in disguise to where my life was going beforehand, where it even went after the wheelchair It the the wheelchair kind of slowed me down and helped me, you know, become a better person. So I really take it as a blessing. Even when my uh, daughter's mother passing, I've been really trying to put that into my daughter. She's been, she's taken it very, very well. Cause we count the blessings, you know, we're, we're blessed this happened to us. And I, th- I think that's a big important thing is to understand that, you know, not everything is always just bad bad things happen but you know things happen for a reason i think right on hey i appreciate you i appreciate you taking the time no problem you guys are tuned in hope you got something good out of it be well don't be dickhead visit our website carrytrainer.com for information about classes held throughout the u.s 
Kerry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at kerrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement. Training at kerrytrainer.com or kerrytrainer.com. Hey, Steve, what do you think of Gunfighter Gun Oil? Well, Mick, I have to show you about that. Gunfighter, Gunfighter Lube Baby, I had the Gunfighter, Gunfighter Blue but then I got me some gunfighter, gunfighter lube. Let me tell you about it. I'm made in the USA. Amazing lubricity. Amazing adhesion, baby. A hundred percent synthetic. But it's gonna last ya. Gunfighter, gunfighter, gun or baby. Took away my gunfighter blue. I'm still working on it, but you know. Yeah, so you like the lube?